I joined the Music Research Center, the first uh, electroacoustic or electronic school in Paris in 1968. And uh, after having studied classical music and uh, uh, having played in uh, some local rock bands, I discovering that year something absolutely unique for the first time, thinking music in terms of sounds and not only based on notes and solfeggio. 1968 was also the student revolution in, in France. So for me, electronic music, electroacoustic music was a kind of ideal way to rebel against the establishment of classical music and also the establishment of rock. 1968 is also a revolution in terms of uh, movies with the release of 2001 a Space Odyssey and uh, for me it has been a massive source of inspiration both on a visual point of view and a musical point of view. So to join this Music Research Center, I headed by Pierre Schaeffer who actually uh, became my master and uh, we had to pass an exam and we were 200 and they were all, all taking only four people every year. And the principle was actually you had to be in a studio for four hours with just uh, one tape recorder, one microphone, some cello tape and scissors and uh, you could choose one percussion instrument. I chose the woodblock and my idea was actually I did a piece of one minute with probably, I don't know, hundreds of edits of uh, half an inch for just by processing one percussion sound I mean, uh, processing it, speeding it, uh, slowing down, uh, reverse, and, and then the result was uh, quite uh, extreme. And uh, they seem to like it because I've been one of the four. During this period, I wrote some of my early tracks called Happiness is a Sad Song, Eros Machine, La Cage, and lots of other stuff. It all started for me in 1976 with the release of Oxygen. I did this uh, album in Old Kitchen, transforming the home studio, and it became a worldwide hit, really in the middle of the uh, disco and the punk trend. My idea was to create a bridge between experimentation and pop music, to create a kind of a soundscape. And I did this album in uh, six parts, part one, two, three, four, five, six, with the idea that maybe someday I would do maybe seven, eight, or so on. The other aspect of uh, Oxygen, of course, is its artwork. And uh, in uh, those days, we were not uh, that many to take care of environment and, and ecology. And I wanted, through the title and through the artwork, sending a strong signal, a strong message. My career in 1976 took off the same year of the launch of the Concorde. After the success of Oxygen, I had the opportunity to develop my themes through two albums, Equinox and Magnetic Fields. For me, they are my, I would say, my first foundations in terms of uh, albums of electronic music. When I talk about themes, of course, we are thinking about uh, melodies, but also about the, the overall concept of each album. If Oxygen was, of course, more uh, linked to the air, I'm, I would say that uh, Equinox is much more aquatic, more wet, more liquid. and where magnetic fields is probably more electric, more organic, with the use of the first sampler ever called the Fairlight. During this period that I really started to think about uh, putting my music outdoor, to think about the different kind of performances for electronic music, and uh, my first big outdoor concert, Place de la Concorde in Paris. In 1981, I'm invited 
to perform in the most extraordinary place, China, for the first time for the Western musician for 30 years. I have the opportunity to play in China and for me and I think for them it was like playing on the moon. Then I decide to do an, an album around this project that will be Concert in China. And Concert in China actually it's a live album but it's also a studio album because half of this double album is new. So for me I always considered that Concert in China is a new album and also it's uh, the period where I, I really start to explore also all the, the new sequences. It's the beginning of MIDI and uh, then I have uh, lots of uh, tracks such as arpeggiator uh, based on long sequences and orchestration arrangement of sequences and also it's uh, the continuation of the constant of experimentation, experimenting with uh, Chinese sounds of the street, of noise uh, in a track such as Souvenir of China for instance. And then it was also an extraordinary situation to play in stadiums, both in Beijing and Shanghai, and have, having lots of Chinese audience with uh, us on stage with extraordinary electronic instruments and, and with a very uh, futuristic stage design and, and, and project show in a country that would uh, close its doors the next uh, following month. So it has been really something very special for me, of course, but also I think for the Chinese people. This whole story started uh, through the British Embassy, which gave my uh, albums to the Chinese radio. And they played it for the first time, they played non-Chinese music. And then I've been invited in uh, Beijing for a masterclass at the official public music school of uh, Beijing. And then I left there a uh, synthesizer, the first electronic uh, instrument in uh, China, and uh, they created around uh, this first visit and the, this first instrument, the first class of electronic music in China. In 1993, I'm coming with quite a new concept of album with Zuluk. And Zuluk is um, based on the idea of sampling vocals using one of the first samplers ever called the Fairlight. And the idea was to, to do a vocal album but without words. I mean, just taking lots of different words from different languages just for their sound, for their phonetic aspect. Uh, then I'm going to travel all, all around the world to gather and to record these different type of conversations, words on radio stations on different continents. And then I'm going to go to New York to work with people such as uh, Laurie Anderson and Marcus Miller and uh, Adrian Bilou to uh, create something fairly different from my previous albums. It's also at the same time that I decide to do a very special project called Music for Supermarkets as a kind of statement against uh, this massive distribution of CDs on supermarkets. I thought at the very early stage that it could be very dangerous for the music industry and to sell music like uh, yogurts. And uh, then I decided to, to do this at the same time. So there is a lot of link musically between music of supermarkets and Zuluk. And for my uh, Planet Jar best of, I decided to uh, give to the fans a, a first demo of uh, music for supermarkets and you can realize that it's very close to the sound of uh, Zuluk. I really used sounds for uh, each other albums on both albums. This period is also the uh, emergence of a revolutionary system called MIDI for all musicians. It's changing my life and the lives of everybody in the studios by uh, being able to synchronize uh, all the instruments uh, together. It really changed the way I produced albums since then. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. 1986 is a year of a new album called Rendezvous and also two major shows for me, Rendezvous Houston and Rendezvous Lyon. 
The Houston project is, uh, of course, very special in uh, my life, involving for the first time NASA uh, for cultural event. And it's around uh, this idea of uh, an astronaut playing uh, live in weightlessness of space. Unfortunately, it's going to be Challenger and the crash of the shuttle. And uh, this concert is going to be a tribute to the astronauts in general and Ron McNair, who played with me saxophone in Last Rendezvous. And the Houston concert is still in the Guinness Book of Records for the biggest audience so far in America for a show. A few months later, I'm uh, doing a Rendezvous Lyon in my hometown in France for the visit of the Pope John Paul II. And uh, it's uh, an extraordinary moment where uh, the, the stage design is uh, taking uh, the whole of uh, one of the main hill of the city, uh, lighting all the buildings and, and uh, churches, and it's probably one of the first uh, mapping, multi-mapping ever. The album Rendezvous is also the first time I'm uh, introducing in recording work using for one of the theme of the album, the laser harp. In 1992, I'm releasing a new album based on the concept of time called Chronology. This uh, project album is going to be the basis of my first stadium tour a few months later called uh, European Concert. Actually, it's not only in stadiums because I'm going uh, to play uh, some very special locations such as the Mont Saint-Michel, Chateau de Versailles, but also pure stadiums such as this Wembley Stadium and the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona, for instance. And this whole project, linked with time, is dedicated to Professor Stephen Hawking, who has been a great in source of inspiration all along this project. In 1997, I decided to add a new episode to Oxygen and I release Oxygen 7 to 13 after part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of the first one. A few months later, I'm invited in Russia to play Oxygen in Moscow. It's going to be a crazy event uh, involving the cosmonauts in Mir Station at that time and uh, a crazy stage design as well. And it's probably one of my uh, most memorable moments on stage. We are going to release a lot of uh, different remixes and versions from this Oxygen 7 to 13 based on uh, sequences and uh, something I really like into electronic music is actually mixing sequences and, and melodies and I think that Oxygen 8, for instance, is a very good example of that. In 1998, I'm starting the recording sessions for my next studio album called Metamorphosis. It's a strange album mixing the kind of very organic and industrial sounds with also lots of vocals. During the recording process, I'm going to be invited by Egypt to do the concert for the Millennium uh, at the Pyramids of Egypt. And uh, naturally, it's going to influence also my recording and the, the way I'm going to uh, finalize this album. 
and I'm going to play Metamorphosis for the first time, the 31st December 1999, at the foot of the Pyramids of Kerms. And uh, the idea behind uh, Metamorphosis is actually uh, mixing, I would say, vocal themes with instrumental soundscapes. So you can imagine the privilege of being able to play in front of one of the seven wonders of the world for the turn of the millennium. The Electronica project has been in itself a huge body of work and it took me a few years to achieve these two albums with 32 collaborators traveling all over the world because one of the dogma of this project was actually to meet with people I wanted to work with in person, in their studio, in their environment or in mine, but physically. Electronica is also the opportunity for me to work with people who have been a heavy source of inspiration to me and uh, with an instant recognizable sound. And of course, it gave me uh, the, uh, the desire to uh, put this Electronica project on stage. Electronica itself was a time machine and also it was for me the idea of to go to the heart of noise, the two titles of Electronica 1 and 2. <laughs> 